Hello and welcome back on my channel. Thanks for watching. Today I will explain you the differences of three different types of charge controllers for wind turbines or hydro turbines. And two of them are also hybrid charge controllers, so you can add solar panels as well. First, of course, we uh, will start with this one, which is um, on uh, eBay and Amazon available and becomes more and more popular. And this is a hybrid charge controller. In that case, it's a 1000 watt version, or 1000 watt wind turbine and 600 watt uh, solar panels. And uh, it seems to be a real MPPT for wind turbines and a PWM for the uh, solar panels. Um, and uh, we will take a look inside that one as well. The second one will be the probably most famous small, um, yeah, it's sold as an MPPT wind turbine charge controller, but in fact, um, it is not an MPPT, but it has a low wind boost. Um, and this one is sold quite often inside uh, some, uh, uh, some sets together with uh, a wind turbine, uh, these cheap Chinese wind turbines, etc., uh, etc. Et but you can use it also for um, hydro systems. So uh, let's uh, take, how, take a look how it works as well to that one. And um, the third one will be the uh, most famous um, standard is the breeze charge controller, which is in fact also a hybrid system. You can add some solar panels to that as well. This is the 700 watt version. I guess it's a good competitor because all the other ones are on the same um, power range. So let's start to uh, take a quick look inside that charge controller and then probably it's more easy for you to take your personal vote because um, it, it depends on the specific use case which one of these three you have to choose. So let's take a look inside. Yeah, uh, I open up uh, the case of these uh, popular Amazon and eBay hybrid charge controller that in fact has a low wind boost by the way and uh, you see it's a nice aluminum case a standard aluminum case but it uh, looks very very heavy this is the uh, control unit for the uh, for the switches and the display of course and uh, it's connected with this wire you can disconnect it to open up the case and you see um, the the transistors here are all connected with a with a heat pad through the case that makes sense to deliver all the um, the heat to the case and then outside of course and he, over here you will find a small temperature sensor under the glue you will find a small temperature sensor for the overheat protection so this controller definitely has an overheat protection you could uh, see the actual temperature also into the menus i will explain that later on and um, uh, so in case of overheating, the um, solar panels will be disconnected and also the wind turbine will be going on the dump load to, uh, yeah, to uh, break it down. Uh, here you see all the connections for the, for the inside wires. Uh, by the way, you see a negative and positive for the dump load. Uh, I don't know why these guys are explaining that that way, because it, it doesn't matter which kind of direction you connect the dump load. This is for the battery, of course, positive and negative for the solar panels. And for the wind turbine also you can add a load if you want. This is the, um, the fuse. This is a fuse, it's not a circuit breaker, it's a fuse inside um, these controllers. So in case uh, of burning that through, you have to open the controller and re-solder that uh, fuse. But the, the good thing is this fuse is certified for 40 amps. And if you take a look below the PCB, you will find the rectifier. And the rectifier is definitely a 50 amps version. So the um, rectifier certified for a current of 50 amps. Uh, and it's also on, on a cooling plate here on the case. Um, and the fuse is for 40 amps. So that definitely makes sense. Uh, so the, the controller will, will survive the certified power but it has also some disadvantages in some specific cases. I will come back to that later. Um, the second one um, is that one. This is completely glued. Everything is um, yeah, it's, it's glued, so you could not really open it. There is a, a video on YouTube available. I will probably, I could, could paste it into the uh, description below um, of a guy who opened up that, um, that controller and also the... Uh, uh, the uh, components which are inside and um, it's quite interesting. So this is definitely a low wind boost. That's true. 
So this controller has a low wind boost, but it's not a real MPPT. It's in, after low wind boost, it's just only a, a rectifier with some controllings, pre-programmed pre um, um, voltage controls. I will uh, come back to that later in the conclusion. You see, the uh, heat sink is not very uh, not very large, so. Um, if you power that one up with more than probably uh, 300 watt uh, uh, constant power, it will be extremely hot. It works, but it will be extremely hot. The, um, the last one, I guess if you are familiar with my videos, you know that uh, I will show you that one is the uh, Isterbreeze. Um, the Isterbreeze i700, in that case, charge controller. This is nothing fancy inside as well. You see the rectifier. You see the switching uh, relays, um, uh, you see the connectors over here, real circuit breaker. So if the, uh, um, if the fuse is burning, there's nothing burning, it's a real circuit breaker. So you just can reset this, this is very nice. Um, you have the uh, control unit over here. Uh, I, I highly recommend it to change this one um, into a new one, then you are um, able to change all the settings of the voltage and the time of the, of the break. Um, if the uh, if the turbine breaks down to over speed or to over voltage, uh, I will have a video for that as well available. And it has a breaker. This is the uh, uh, this is uh, the the only controller that definitely has a break. Um, so um, you see also the, the the size differences of this controller. This is the i700 for 700 watts. This is probably certified for 800 watts, which I don't really believe. And that one uh, seems to be for 1000 watts. So you see um, the differences also of the of the cooling surface. You see um, this is a much, much bigger surface just only for the rectifier than this one for the whole um, controller. And especially um, if you compare it to that one. But anyhow, uh, size doesn't matter all the time. So um, I will give you a short conclusion about um, what every specific controller can do and can not do. And this is, uh, in some cases, quite interesting uh, how the differences are. So uh, stand by for that. So moment of truth. Which charge controller you should choose for your specific use case? Um, well, let's discuss about the functionality of these ones. First, let's start with this uh, blue controller, which is a hybrid controller, by the way. And this is an MPPT for the wind turbine and a PWM for the uh, solar panels. In fact, it is definitely a low wind boost controller. I can confirm that um, if you connect that one to a 12 volt system, it starts to boost the um, wind turbine uh, with a specific uh, voltage of probably 7 to 8 volts. Um, at 6 to 7 volts, you recognize it starts to control it a bit, but uh, the charging starts at 8 volts out of the wind turbine. So this is definitely a low wind boost, but of course there's not that much energy in a low wind um, area out of the wind turbine in any case, so it doesn't matter how much you boost it or not. But it is definitely a controller, it's definitely an MPPT. I recognize it a couple of times because um, the, um, the, I measured the VH of spectrum and I, I saw the typical uh, MPPT noise on an H of spectrum by connecting a wind turbine to that one. By the way, it's not uh, with the solar panels, it's just only with the wind turbine, so definitely uh, the wind turbine seems to be um, MPPT controlled. Anyhow, um, there are also very nice uh, menu settings. You will see um, the output of the wind turbine, you will see the output of the solar panels, you will see the, uh, um, the total output, you will see the current uh, out of the wind turbine, you will see uh, the voltage out of the wind turbine, the same for the solar panels, um, and uh, of course some battery settings, and you can set also lithium iron phosphate batteries um, at this uh, controller. So this is definitely a nice one. What I don't like is that the case is not that big for 1000 watts. So if you um, use that one at the wind turbine that probably produces more than 500 watts for a long time, as I have over here in my windy area, um, even the i700 or the i1000 producing um, quite often more than um, 300 to 500 watts for over a few hours, 
and uh, then this one becomes extremely hot. So probably if you um, live in a windy area, you have to add maybe over here some extra uh, cooling surface like, like an extra heat sink or what else. Anyhow, let's go, go to, the, uh, to the most famous small one. This is definitely um, an MPPT boost controller, but that's it. And the voltage settings are fixed in that one. That means if you run this uh, controller on a 12 volt system, if you reach 14 volts, this controller automatically uh, short circuit all these three lines out of the wind turbine. So uh, it breaks down the turbine without any dump load. It just <laughs> connects all the three lines together uh, if you reach the 14 volt. And the same with 28 volt, of course, in a 24 volt system. So um, at lithium iron phosphate batteries, this is maybe a bit too low. It works, but maybe you would not reach the maximum um, charge for these batteries. Um, the, the good thing is, um, yeah, it definitely is plug and play. It definitely works, um, but it becomes extremely hot, of course, if you have uh, more than 200, 300 watt um, um, constant power out of the wind turbine or the hydro turbine. But I would recommend this controller for portable operation. So if you are um, was a, um, um, on a way with a backpack, for example, or have your small hydro turbine in your backpack with you, uh, this would be a good charge controller for that um, hydro um, turbine, for example, or your small wind turbine out of the backpack. So if you're um, enjoying some camping, some portable operation, what else? Uh, this is definitely a good one. And also if you um, making some project work at the university at school with a small DIY um, wind turbine out of a hoverboard engine, for example. Uh, this is a very good choice to play with that. The last one, um, very uh, well known, is the, uh, the Easter Breeze charge controller. Well, um, the, the advantages of these Easter Breeze charge controllers are definitely that you would have brake. Uh, so in case of storm, you could pre Break, set to break and the uh, wind turbine is still fixed before the storm, the storm starts. This is, by the way, a um, point you have to add to all the other controllers. You have to definitely add um, a, a break. Uh, and one of my next videos I will show you how you can do that. But um, these both controllers, uh, that one and the cheap Chinese one, does not have the opportunity to um, break um, the turbine down. Uh, just only controlled by the controller. So uh, this is definitely an advantage over here. Um, what I, I like is also the heat sink and uh, what I also like is that you have some circuit breakers inside. What I don't like is uh, that you may have to change these, um, these small control unit. I, uh, I did a video about that, how you can do that, but you have to change it if you want to change the voltage settings and the settings for the uh, time of the break um, and on and on. So um, this is not very difficult, but you have to change it if you want to use lithium iron phosphate batteries, for example. I will put a link about the video in the description below. So um, I use that one quite often, especially in, in my windy area, because um, this is uh, one that definitely survives high power. It definitely survives peak powers, which are more than this controller certified for. And um, yeah, you can just install it and forget it. It works definitely. It definitely, it works. Um, and in case of a short circuit or what else, you have some circuit breakers inside. But you have to modificate that one with um, with this um, additional uh, or with this uh, other um, charge controller if you want to use lithium iron phosphate batteries, for example. So moment of truth. Um, what, what I recommend? Well, um, all these three charge controllers definitely work. Um, the, the, the cons at the uh, blue one and the small Chinese one is that you definitely need a brake and also it has no circuit breaker. Uh, this one has absolutely no circuit <laughs> and uh, that one or fuse and that one has a small fuse um, uh, no circuit breaker, just a small fuse inside, but you have to resolder the fuse uh, if uh, the bull burns through. So I guess at these both you have to add definitely um, brake and also external circuit breakers. What I like is that this one comes uh, together with a dump load. 
and also um, uh, it has an overheating protection and it has nice functionalities into the menu and you can directly use it with lithium iron phosphate batteries. But anyhow, it's certified for 1000 watt, but probably it's better to use it from not more than 600-700 watts constant power. Um, what I like at this one is definitely it's very light. Uh, for portable operation, backpack, backpack operation, it's definitely well. But as I mentioned before, it has no fuse, no circuit breakers. Um, it has a yeah, sort of, uh, circuit protection, but um, it has nothing else. So definitely you have to add some things. Um, and uh, what I like over here is, as I mentioned out before, the, the brake and the uh, circuit breakers. But what I don't like is they have to modificate it with the, uh, the controlling system to use it with lithium iron phosphate batteries. So now I guess um, you see the advantages and disadvantages of every uh, of these controllers. Uh, I will uh, create a video, I guess, the next couple of days where I can show you all these three controllers in work and progress. But anyhow, I guess um, the most important things you know right now. Just a final comment about the maximum inside voltage over here. Um, in the manual, uh, uh, they say um, the maximum input voltage for the wind turbine is 80 volts. Um, it doesn't matter if you're using 24 volt or the 12 volt system. For that one, I do have no specific information. And for the Easter breeze, it's close to 100 volts. So anyway. If you like the video, please uh, click the like button or click the subscribe button and uh, then you will uh, receive an alert about my new videos. And so far, so good. Stay healthy, stay safe and uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.